Welcome back guys. So today, yes, I've got a little smirk, a little smile on my face, if you will, because we finally get to do a follow-up concerning last year's At Games controversy. So today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at some legal filings, some court documents that I paid my own money to get access to. That way I could share this with you guys. And holy crap, is there some really interesting and hilarious things going on here. So to give you a quick refresher, the one video I highly recommend watching if you want to get up to date on this is the exposed at games and trouble manipulative and shady business practices video that I did. Um, it didn't get too many views, but uh, for being out for almost a year now, but a lot of uh, news and media outlets had picked up on this story from my video, from the stuff that I was claiming, other YouTube channels as well. Um, I did do some follow-ups because there was a lot of interesting things going on out here at games paying for five-star reviews, paid reviews exposed, uh, at games changes story and gets caught lying. I did some follow-ups on this. Other YouTubers as well had, uh, you know, looked at this story and reported on it and it was pretty crazy. So what had happened was, is that at games had released this Namco blast unit, this little unit you plug into the back of your TV comes with some crappy ass controllers and you can play Pac-Man. So they sent out review units. The only person that I was aware of who got a review unit was Mr. John Hancock. And his review was glaringly positive, right? And my review was very negative, my video up here. I was like, what the hell am I playing here? Uh, these are the home versions, the NES ROMs. They play very poorly. There's screen tearing, all sorts of issues with it. And then referring back to John Hancock's video, why the hell did he give such a positive review for such a crappy product, and it turns out that they had sent him a doctored up review unit that had arcade versions of, of the games on there, and it ran a lot better. So that's what was advertised. We were getting the arcade versions, but we did not get that in retail. Uh, At Games had later responded stating that the early versions that were released in stores were gonna have the home versions and later production uh, runs would have the arcade versions. Why well, have two different uh, versions of the same product. Why not release one, you know, in the beginning? Well, there's there's some possibilities here. I think maybe they couldn't get the hardware, uh, you know, to run properly for the cost that they wanted to profit as much as they could. But it goes a hell of a lot further than that because why is there a lawsuit against them? It's not the class action that I was talking about, like people suing them for false advertising. It's actually Bandai, the people who own Pac-Man, who are suing these fools. So let's go ahead and swap on over and take a look at this. I did pay for access to this document here because I just had to, I had to find out what was really going on. So this was just recently filed on September 20th, 154 pages. There's a lot of pages to this thing. Don't worry, this is not gonna be an hour long video. We're not looking at everything. We're just gonna look at the stuff that's really interesting, right? So here we go. Bandai Namco Entertainment America Inc. is the plaintiff, and they're going up against At Games Holdings LTD, the defendants. What's the complaint for? Well, there's a few things involved here. One of the main things is that story that I was talking about, the shady business practices with that particular product, but there's more to it than that. So the complaint is for, and I find this all hilarious, trademark infringement under the Lanham Act, counterfeiting under the Lanham Act, at games counterfeiting products? What? Copyright infringement under the Copyright Act. Unfair competition and false designation of origin under the Lanham Act. What? At games, come on now, ass games. What are you guys doing out there? Unfair competition and false designation. Okay, we read that. False advertising under the Lanham Act. California unfair competition. You guys is in some trouble here. California false advertising. So there's seven complaints jury trial is demanded so most of the beginning document is just talking about how bandai owns all this stuff um so they're just kind of giving you know some uh background to things we're not going to go through all of that but right here uh, it does state bandai namco uh brings this complaint against defendant at games and defendants one through 50 for injunctive relief and monetary damages as well as such other relief as specified herein for those seven complaints that we mentioned. So then it just goes into the background of the two companies. Jurisdiction and venue, the court has subject matter over the jurisdiction over their claims. There we go. And then the factual backgrounds, just uh, talking about the stuff that they own and all that. We don't really need to look at that. 
We're going to skip down to, I believe it's page 9 or 10. So let's get there. They list all their copyrights, all that good stuff. Um, here we go. They talk about their relationship with At Games. Uh, Bandai is informed and believes, and on that basis alleges that At Games develops, you know, all this stuff that they do, the crappy products that they make. Bandai is informed, believes, and on that basis alleges in or around June 2012, At Games CEO Ping Kang Hsung, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, oh well, uh, first contacted Bandai seeking to obtain license. So way back about seven years ago, that's when they first started their relationship. Um, so here we go. Through, they wanted the, to, to use the license for plug and plays, handhelds, all sorts of other things. And after Hassung specified his request specifically for Miss Pac-Man, Bandai rejected his proposal specifically for Miss Pac-Man. Since then, Ant Games has sent multiple proposals and some have been approved. Um, so not the Miss Pac-Man though, but other things they have. They're, they're, they're legit saying we have worked with them, we have given them license. And this is where the issue comes in. We'll talk about that in a second because that's going to be on the next page. During that time, Bandai has performed all of the significant obligations it owed to At Games, contractual and otherwise, which in turn allowed At Games to capitalize on its relationship by selling its products to consumers. While At Games was entitled to use in limited and defined ways, certain Bandai properties in its products at no time present or past has At Games been legally entitled to use the Miss Pac Man property. So this is one big piece of this. This this court filing has to do with a few things. One of the things is going to be Miss Pac-Man. Another thing is those shady business practices that we talked about in that other video. And that's one of the biggest things here. So here we go. At Games improper and wrongful con uh, conduct. Over the course of Bandai's business relationship with At Games, At Games has engaged in proper or wrongful conduct on a number of occasions. In 2018, at Games was developing a product that incorporated in significant part Bandai licensed material, including but not limited to limited to Pac-Man characters. So there we go. This is the next page, page 10. This is where we get some of the juicy details. The other thing that's in here too is there's some emails between them. A lot of, a lot of interesting stuff going on here. So here we go. Bandai is informed and believes on that basis alleges that without Bandai's authorization, At Games used certain third-party materials in developing the Pac-Man product. At Games has admitted to this conduct in correspondence with Bandai. Okay, Bandai is informed and believes, and on that basis alleges that in or around August and September 2018, this is when John Hancock got his review unit, At Games began distributing an approved, an approved, this was approved by Bandai. The version they sent to John Hancock was approved. <laughs> they began distributing an approved version of the Pac-Man product to various press and media outlets, seeking to generate positive reviews and, and press prior to the Pac-Man's uh, retail release, right? Uh, that's fine and dandy. You're sending out the uh, retail product to people, getting some positive press, getting people pumped up. And like I stated in that previous video, it was not a knock at John Hancock. He reviewed a very different product from what I had reviewed. It was not the same product. So there was no ill will toward him. In that regards, because he reviewed something completely different. So that's why we had differing thoughts on this product. He was used by at games. He was used by these fools. And that, that's, that's kind of one of the things that I was uh, really annoyed by is that they were manipulating, you know, YouTubers and reviewers with these products. And that's just fishy. That's, that's sketch. After that, I've never bothered buying another product of theirs. I don't care. All their products are crap. I don't give a crap. I'm not reviewing them. I'm not spending the money because on that principle alone that they were manipulating people, they were using reviewers. I was like, I'm done. I will not buy another at games product, but I will report on these things, right? Bandai is informed and believes. And on that basis alleges that the version of the Pac-Man product distributed the various press and media outlets featured Pac-Man game software that was approved by Bandai based on a video clip recorded by at games approved Pac-Man product. Multiple press and media recipients of the approved Pac-Man product published positive reviews and in most cases specifically highlighted the superior version of the Pac-Man software included therein, right? I didn't. I knocked it because I got some crappy NES versions that didn't run well. <laughs> Going forward, Bandai is informed and believes and on that basis alleges at least between August 2018 and October 2018, 
At Games distributed Pac-Man products to retailers and or retail distributors that featured a version of Pac-Man that materially, materially differed from the version approved by Bandai, the, uh, the, uh, the unauthorized Pac-Man product, at least in so far as the Pac-Man game software featured therein clearly displayed the logo of a third-party software development company during a launch sequence of that game. That's interesting. In at least that respect, the unauthorized Pac-Man product distributed to retailer substantially deviated from the approved Pac-Man product. So they're talking about specifically whoever developed that version of the game was clearly identified in there. And that is one of the reasons that they can say, hey, this was not the approved version, right? Bandai is informed and believes and on that basis alleges that the appearance of the third party software development company's logo was the result of at games unauthorized use of materials belonging to a third party. Bandai is informed and believes and on that basis further alleges that consumers relied upon the positive reviews of the approved Pac-Man product and their decision to purchase the unauthorized Pac-Man product. Bandai is further informed and believes that retailers and or retail distributors similarly, similarly, I can't speak, purchased the unauthorized Pac-Man product from at games for sale to the public based on their understanding they would be receiving and in turn selling the superior approved Pac-Man product. That's exactly what my issue was, them shady ass business practices. People would buy this based off of those positive reviews from people like John Hancock, where they reviewed something that did not exist. Band, uh, At Games had said, oh, we're going to release this version later. Never happened. Oh, it's going to be retailer specific. Never happened. And the version that they sold the stores was not approved to begin with. I hope you guys lose your freaking asses over this, Ass Games. I, I really despise At Games. I despise them because of this. Because of these kind of things. Sell shitty products all you want. Who cares? Some of their shitty products people have enjoyed. That's fine. I don't care. But when you start manipulating the marketplace, when you start manipulating potential consumers, you start manipulating reviewers, YouTubers, that's, that's, that's it, man. Screw you guys. I, I, have no, I have no feelings, no sympathy towards what happens because of how crappy you are. Let's see. What else do we got here? Uh-uh-uh. Let's see. Bandai is informed and believes and on that basis alleges that following various media members' discovery that they had pu published positive reviews of a different Pac-Man product from the version of the product that was available at retail, the unauthorized version, such press and media members published subsequent negative reviews, like myself, of the Pac-Man product in which they disowned and recanted their prior positive reviews and warned consumers against purchasing a Pac-Man product. So... I'm pretty sure John Hancock did do a follow-up after a lot of pressure on that, um, talking about you know his his uh, experience, and they actually had sent him the retail version, I believe, and I don't know if he gave it a positive review or not. I don't really care right now, um, but yeah, you know they did resend one out to him. People had negative reviews on this product; they got a positive review, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I only bring up John Hancock because he was the only one I knew that that received one of those units. I don't know who else did. At Games distribution of two different versions of the Pac-Man product, coupled with the prominent use of Bandai's name, brands, and other licensed properties with such products and the resulting negative response from consumers and, me and members of the press and media has caused irreparable harm to Bandai's reputation and goodwill. That is true. I mean, Bandai whores out their licenses. Don't get me wrong here. They do. But they did get implicated in this with at games because it you know you see at games is the one manufacturing putting the product out but bandai's properties are emblazoned all over the packaging you equate this pac-man this is pac-man and it's a shitty product who owns pac-man bandai you shit that's the way i look at it i mean that's not the way i look at it but that's the way i look at other people looking at it you know what i mean damn and then the, the next part of this like i said that was the main thing was that whole situation. The other thing is the unauthorized Miss Pac-Man product. On or around August 19th, 2019, Bandai became aware that At Games had developed the Miss Pac-Man Legends Compact. I hadn't seen that one. It's like a mini arcade. Kind of looks neat. What? With six buttons? What's going on here? I wouldn't buy it though. Screw you guys. Uh, home arcade, the unauthorized Miss Pac-Man. Unauthorized! A true and correct image of the unauthorized product is depicted below. So essentially they're just saying that they never gave them any rights 
to use Miss Pac-Man, that they'd continually rejected their requests to use Miss Pac-Man. They have some emails concerning that as well, and it's listed in this document. Uh, Bandai has neither given permission nor licensed at games the rights to use Miss Pac-Man. Earlier in this document, they talk about the history of Miss Pac-Man as well, which is really interesting. Uh, let's see. Bandai is informed beliefs that on this basis, the at games has taken the at aforesaid actions with the intent to trade on and associate itself with the goodwill and reputation of Bandai, the Miss Pac-Man mark, and other marks or source identifying um, relating to Miss Pac-Man and to confuse actual and potential customers, including but not limited to actual and potential licensees, distributors, and retailers of Miss Pac-Man products. So there's a lot of information that's essentially just saying these fools are ripping us off. Um, what's going on here? At Games' false statement relating to the licensing of Miss Pac-Man. So this is the other issue. In addition to producing and distributing the unauthorized Miss Pac-Man product, Bandai is informed and believes, and on that basis alleges that Ad Games has made false statements with respect to its use of the property. In particular, on or around July 26, 2019, an affiliate of Bandai was contacted by a current licensee advising that they are aware of someone from Ad Games reaching out to indicate they were obtaining arcade rights for Miss Pac-Man from the GCC successors. Ad Games has denied to at least Bandai that it has made such false statements to the licensee or similar false statements to other licensees or distributors. Specifically, a few days after Ad Games contacted the licensee advising that it was acquiring rights to Miss Pac-Man, Bandai had a call with Ad Games to discuss Bandai's plans to celebrate Pac-Man's 40th anniversary. However, during the call, Ad Games continually shifted the conversation to Miss Pac-Man. They didn't care about no 40th anniversary. They cared about using the property they, they didn't have the rights to and that they'd been bugging for since 2012. After the call, At Games sent a confirmatory email to Bandai stating that it not, did not claim to be licensed by Namco for Miss Pac-Man products. Okay, the um, email correspondence is listed as Exhibit 6. It's in this uh, message. We'll look at it in this document. In response to At Games' email, Bandai requests that At Games confirm that it had not claimed to have required a license to Miss Pac-Man. At Games responded stating, LOL, like a little freaking a freaking teen girl lol lol bandai <laughs> laughing out loud bandai ha 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 no we didn't make such a claim oh just kidding like what the fuck is that who the hell responds to to like professional business emails that way lol oh my god omg jeez dude what the hell's wrong with these at games peoples man we didn't. We don't speak with anybody about this type of sensitive and confidential things. He <laughs> he. Subsequently, Bandai learned from Karan himself that despite At Games' representation and assurances to the contrary, At Games had in fact contacted Karan about acquiring the GCC successor's royalty interest in Miss Pac-Man. It was at this point that Bandai be also became aware that At Games had de delivered the unauthorized Pac-Man product to Karan. Karan. On or about August 19th, Karan informed Bandai that At Games CEO, his son, had contacted him regarding At Games potentially acquiring the, the royalty interest in this Pac-Man. Until that time, the parties to the GCC agreements, namely Bandai Namco and the GCC successors, had been discussing how to resolve and ultimately terminate their longstanding contractual relationship. At, Game was, At Games was not a third-party beneficiary or connected to this agreement in any way yet elected to unilaterally contact the GCC successors regarding the agreements just days before those contracts were to be mutually terminated. So they were trying to scoop in, man. They are preemptively striking on this Miss Pac-Man license because they'd been denied for so long. Now they were like, we got to get in while the, the getting's good, right? Develop the product and everything. Like, this is what we's doing because we're going to get this license. Uh, Curran further advised Bandai that At Games told him it has been in discussions with Walmart, who had expressed significant interest in selling the unauthorized Ms. Pac-Man product. Interesting. On August 28th, Bandai received correspondence from counsel for At Games, which stayed in part, we hereby notify Bandai Namco that At Games has acquired... Oh, wow, these sons of bitches, right? At Games has acquired all the right title, claim, and interest of GCC in and under all agreements, contracts, licenses, commitments, undertakings and other legally binding arrangements between GCC and Bandai Namco as amended to date. Despite subsequent attempts, Bandai has been unable to independently verify that claim. Further, on or around September 3rd, Bandai received an unsolicited email from an independent sales representative 
copying at game CEO, his son, and informing Bandai that the sales representative was actively working with Sung on creating an opportunity with Miss Pac-Man licensed product for GameStop. The sales representative also mentioned that it hoped that the recent agreement between GCC and At Games hopefully will provide us all a way to work together on this product. A true and correct copy of this correspondence is in Exhibit 7, listed below. At Games has sung immediately responded to the representative's email to Bandai confirming At Games' interest in working with Bandai on the project, but making no attempt to clarify that At Games does not hold and never held a license to exploit Miss Pac-Man. Exhibit 7 again. Bandai is informed and believes, and on that basis alleges that Ad Games is likely to make and or has already made similar false statements to other current or prospective Bandai licensees or prospective retailers or distributors of Miss Pac-Man products. Wow. So this goes on and on. I've kind of scrubbed through this a bit, but that's the most interesting stuff. Uh, they do have some of the exhibits marked down below. They have all the accounts listed individually about the allegations, the trademark infringement, the counterfeiting, <laughs> the copyright infringement under the Copyright Act, unfair competition, false designation of origin, false advertising. They have everything individually listed on here, um, all seven counts. Prayer for relief. The plaintiff Bandai respectfully requests that this court immediately preliminarily and permanently enjoin at games and all persons acting in concern with it, including without limitation, its officers, directors, employees, all of them people from using or preparing to use Bandai's trademarks, including but not limited to Miss Pac-Man and all marks set forth within the Miss Pac-Man trademark, uh, as well as any confusingly similar, similar designations uh, immediately. Uh, what else? Immediately stop blah, blah, blah from further development or distribution of Miss Pac-Man, unauthorized Miss Pac-Man. So they're just looking for them to stop all this stuff. They're looking for uh, damages for the uh, other issue, the shady business practices with sending out that those uh, products that weren't what was authorized with the blast units, the ass blasters. So there we go. Jury demand. They want their monies. They want this to be taken care of. They have all the exhibits listed here, um, which is a bunch of articles concerning video games this is the first part of the exhibit, uh, which is interesting. I don't really know what the relevance is, um, but we'll skip past that to take a quick look at some of these emails. Okay, the first few exhibits are just like trademark and patent filings, that kind of thing, certificate of uh, copyright registration, uh, a lot of interesting stuff there. Uh, what is this one? Certificate of registration, just all, you know, talking about Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man stuff like that. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? We got to find the emails. The emails are coming up. Character logos. They've got a bunch of stuff concerning that that is an exhibit here. Just showing that, hey, we own all this. Looks like a coloring book. Exhibit five. Oh, exhibit five. Here's the uh, mini arcade, the Legends Compact, the mini version of their Legends Arcade machine. Oh, Miss Pac-Man decorated, right? Doesn't look too shabby, but F you at games. I wouldn't buy it. Screw you guys. You'd probably send a version... You would send a version with arcade games to John Hancock, and then I would go to the store and buy it, and it would have freaking Atari ROMs on it, you sons of bitches. But here's the other uh, exhibits, the emails from PKH at Games to uh, people from uh, Bandai Namco. Uh, hi, Kyoko and Sh Shuhei. Shuhei, I'm saying their names incorrectly, I'm sure. Apologize for that, because they work for Bandai. If it was at Games, I don't give a fuzz. Thank you for the call. A quick recap. We will wait for your 40th anniversary um, and resubmit our proposal for 2020 concerning your feedback and guideline. We will prepare to have face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, we did not claim to be licensed by Namco for Miss Pac-Man products. Category has already received Miss Pac-Man license. We're granted earlier before the wait policy. For our categories, our intention and interest remains unchanged that we pay GCC a separate royalty in addition to our direct. Let me know if I missed anything. So straight from uh, Shuhei, Hi, PK. Thanks for the call. We did not claim. So he's paraphrasing like, hey, you said we did not claim to be licensed. Just one quick confirmation. Our partner told us that Ad Games told them that they have acquired license for Miss Pac-Man for both arcade and consumer games from GCC. Can you please confirm that this is not what you claimed? So from PKH to Shuhai, Shuhai, the um, Bandai peoples, um, LOL. 
<laughs> right? The little girly. No, we didn't make such a claim. You will be the first one. And he put a little emoji in there too. What a bish. Who's this strange partner? We don't speak with anybody about this type of sensitive and confidential things. I guess not. But you'd be blocking fools on Twitter, man. You blocked me, you bastards. Here's another email from PKH to uh, Bandai. Thank you, John. Dear Hyde. Who's this John? Oh, Job Ebbinghouse. I would love to visit you to explore capturing a significant revenue opportunity at GameStop with your partnership and support. We're based in El Segundo, California. Very close to me, you bastards. From John. Um, what does he got to say? Hope all is well with you. Great seeing you, whatever. I've been working with PKH and the team at Ad Games for many years. He's a good friend and one I have tremendous respect for. What? Respect for such a shady businessman? He and I are working on uh, creating an opportunity with Miss Pac-Man licensed product for GameStop. I've copied PK, blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's, that's, that's the last one there. So they've got all their evidence in place here. They got everything going on. I know this is a long ass video, but it had to be done. I had to talk on this because, you know, this is follow up concerning what had happened last year. And am I rejoicing? Am I enjoy because at games is being held under the fire? Yes. I'm very happy for that. Any company who wants to be a shady ass mofo, and lie to the consumers deserves to be held to the fire. Sure, does this per necessarily pertain to you lying to me and me buying something that it wasn't? Yeah, it partly has to do with that, but it also mainly has to do with you guys manipulating Bandai themselves. So you manipulated the company that you got the license from and you manipulated the, 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 the reviewers, you manipulated the potential customers, the consumers, you manipulated all of us. You sons of bitches, you guys have not learned. That is for sure. I'm, I know there's a lot more to this story than what we've talked about today, but this video has gone on for quite some time. We went through this document, scrubbed through it. Like I said, I did spend some money to um, get access to this because it wasn't readily available out there. And not too many people are really talking about this. Uh, the only other person was uh, uh, Keo who'd messaged me and we kind of had some conversations concerning that. Uh, he has a YouTube channel out there. I'll, 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 I'll put his link out there. He does a lot of stuff concerning uh, video games and emulation and whatnot. But we were having a conversation about this, and I started discovering more information. Say, so I got to jump on a video. You know what I mean? So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. With that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-byes. And screw at games. And boom. Bye.